Hey guys, it's Jblader. Welcome back to another video on the Mind Guard SMP. I'm just doing a little fly around looking at all the stuff that we did in the last episode, which was very greatly received. You guys really enjoyed what I had done, and I gotta tell you, I really enjoyed what I had done as well. So, was really happy um, with the way that this build turned out. So, thank you guys for your support. And we're gonna be doing some more building today. In fact, I've been doing a lot of resource collecting. Let's take a look. At some of the stuff that I've gotten here of course doing villager trading to get all of that quartz and all the brick so that does take some time and I thought about introducing some more colors here but what I decided to do was change the diorite out for hardened clay I had some other people over here and they were like you know the diorite's not just not quite right and I had to agree um, I think we can make diorite work on another building but this one needed to be changed Anyway, I've also went over to a Mesa biome and was doing a lot of collecting of more hardened clay in the light gray because I think that light gray is going to be really good um, for a building as well. And when I go out for walks around my city, I just am so inspired to um, build what I see and it makes me really excited. So today we're going to be building... Um, a building that's going to go around the villager breeder that we built in the first episode. It's going to go around the trading hall. And then also I need to probably reposition this breeder. Right now this thing is disabled. And I disabled it by basically just breaking all the beds and only having two in here. And I want to keep this thing functioning because I do have it hooked up to the villager trading hall. Which might be expanded later. So I really just need to push this part back a little bit so that we can... Um, basically put a building around it just a little building kind of like a little facade like we did over here and i think that will be great all right some time has went by i decided not to time lapse this um just so i could really focus on the building aspect of it and i want to walk you a little bit through my process in case you're curious of building this style uh yourself i usually start with this porch and i figure out how i want this front part to be and a lot of times the doors these this door entrance part of these colonials are recessed so they'll be back a block I decided to, to bring it up a block and then I also decided to have this right side of the building have a little um, pop out feature which you see in a lot of colonial style houses and this will go up to the second floor as well and then the roof is kind of like this over here where it's a false roof in the front and then it dips off into uh, the back so I'm just shifting around different material here we're going to be using a lot of uh, brick and of course a lot of the quartz that we're using already and I find myself not using the scaffolding that much I think scaffolding is really nice but for what I'm doing here I'm just kind of pillaring myself up and using rockets to uh, get to where I need to go we're gonna have a window here and for the windows I'm not really worried about losing some material like that that's fine for the windows, I've been using this dark oak at a uh, bottom layer and then using a quartz block behind it. So that's kind of mimicking uh, what we had been doing on the other buildings. And then eventually I'll come back and put sea lanterns here so we don't have to worry about lighting. And it lights it up really nicely at night. So we'll do something like this. Okay, we can save one block here. And then I kind of just repeat that all the way around. On this side, we're not going to have a window this time. So we can just go ahead and do this. And yeah, that's kind of how I'm doing this facade. So this is going to go up a few more blocks before we have this uh, roof part come out. But just wanted to give you a little rundown of how I'm making these parts. That's basically more or less how I'm doing it. And hopefully uh, this will inspire you to build this style in your own world because I am really liking stuff like this. It's totally different than what I'm used to doing. But I think it's pretty nice, so maybe you guys can pick it up in your own worlds. Anyway, I'm going to get back to building, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Alright, this is what scaffolding is really good for. If you're working on a part like this and you need to come up and down a lot, I guess it's pretty good for that. Anyway, we were working on this upper part here. Let's go ahead and knock our scaffolding down. And I think I got this part like I wanted it. I just need to put the glass in that section right there, and I think we'll be good to go. Let's give this a little flying look here. Um, because I think it is really coming together 
yeah so that looks pretty good and so now we just got to do this uh, roof part which I'm gonna be doing in uh, black terracotta so I went over to the wither rose farm and AFK for a very 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 long time like 12 15 hours something like that um, for goody and if you guys remember we built that thing a few episodes ago um, I was having trouble with it breaking and I actually didn't have any trouble with it breaking for about 10 hours and then I came back a few hours later and it had broken the iron golem had died and so I don't know how that actually managed to happen um, I think it's just a bug where the wither is tracking the iron golem on accident or not tracking the iron golem on accident um, and so it happened to break it yeah there we go so that looks really nice yeah I like that okay so let's go ahead and grab some more material and we're gonna put in the roof to this thing and finish up the facade all right I think this is good enough for what I want to do right now I think I'm bothered by this not being symmetrical so we may make this little thing symmetrical here anyway this facade is done if I do a little fly though you'll see that the back of the building isn't done Oof, yeah, so it's just the front of the building, so we got to do the back of the building, obviously, but let's go ahead and do the building that is going to be beside it, um, that is going to cover up this part of the breeder. It's going to be right up beside this building, and it's going to be utilizing the hardened clay, so I'm excited to get that thing underway. Let's do some of the foundation work. Foundation is in place. Finished up this house, I think. Went with the green terracotta and sandstone just because it's so much different than the other builds that we have here maybe kind of controversial that it's that different um, but I think it really works and I also did some little like archway thing here um, with the sandstone on the roof and I think it just looks so cool it's a, such a cute little house I think if you saw this right down the street with some green siding um, you would stop in uh, want to take a look at it because I think it looks pretty nice of course this is just the facade in here we got nothing just hiding the villager breeder and that means that we got to do the outer walls of this thing um, so I'm going to do that I plan to just kind of um, use stone brick for the back side of this one because it shouldn't be that visible as well we're gonna have a little walkway there and we got a little bit of landscaping to do out here on the front um, like lighting up some stuff in here so we don't get too many mobs spawning and adding some bushes into places like this. I kind of like having bushes under the porch as if it's kind of overgrown a little bit. I think it looks nice. Um, so let me go grab some material, we'll do that. Just a little bit of detail, like adding some grass here, it makes the world a difference. And of course, I've been using these berry bushes um, to kind of decorate, and the reason why is they add a pop of red, which I think is kind of nice, and they keep bad guys out from kind of watching us here. And I think they look kind of nice as well, so mobs aren't going to spawn on them. Um, and then I want to start hiding a little bit of lighting as well. Um, of course, we could add some flowers, but for right now, they kind of remind me of holly bushes, which are really popular around here where I live. So maybe we'll just kind of add some of those and we'll sprinkle in some flowers in uh, the future. Um, so let's do the backs of these two buildings, and then we'll be able to really hide this villager breeder and maybe even upgrade the little building it's in just a little bit because uh, I want to be able to create something that's going to be able to produce um, villagers for an iron farm at some point or we may just leave it because really I should make the iron farm somewhere else realistically the iron farm should probably be uh, where it's not going to be loading everything on the server so it should probably be down here around this end so all that other stuff isn't loaded um, so I should take that into consideration Anyway, yeah, let's finish the backs of these uh, facades. And like that, everything is done. I just got finished doing a live stream here. And thank each and every one of you guys that came out and supported me. As you can see, though, I did run out of wool. And I just don't feel like going and buying more. Um, so a sheep farm might be on the way. Let's take a look inside. We now have plenty of space to expand this area if we wanted to. But for now, we're just going to leave it be. And we finished these backs. I left them very plain, just the brick and the stone brick for that one. And then here on the side, we have some windows. Nice little alleyway, so uh, really similar to this building right here, the storage building. Um, just kind of copied more of the style on the front with the chiseled quartz and the quartz pillars and stuff like that. 
um, but I think that this build turned out really great. I'm really pleased with both of these facades, and this has been something we've needed to do for a while because we've had the villager breeder and the villager trading hall here since episode one, and we're just now getting around to wrapping this up. But anyway, guys, if you want to know more of my process, um, you can check out my live stream. I tried to, uh, to spend this episode discussing my process a little bit more than usual um, because I know some of you guys really appreciate that. So if you do, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Um, this episode's getting kind of longer than I wanted to, so I'll end it there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.